What's going on guys? Welcome to the next part in our Rick and Morty app series. In the last part, we went ahead and set up the view models for our character detail screen. We're gonna continue on our path today by attempting to populate appropriate view models as well as building out our cells. As per usual, start by hitting that like button down below, say hello in the comments, and let's continue. So let's see. So what we actually want to go ahead and do here is from the model that we have held in our view model for character detail, let me actually go ahead and open that up. So let's open up the appropriate file. We created these kind of dummy view models for our cells, but more specifically what we wanna do is we wanna think about what each of these need, right? So for the character photo cell view model, we probably just want the URL in here for the actual image. So I'm gonna go ahead and say image, URL should probably be a URL respectively like that. And let's actually just pass this in. We'll say image URL is like that self image URL, image URL. So let's see what we're gonna want inside of here. So for the info cell, what I was thinking is maybe we'll have a sub label, which will be, you know, what does this field show? So maybe if we want to show, you know, their species, we can have the word species down here and actually have the, you know, like whatever species the character is, human, alien, etc., up above. So the way I would model that is as follows. So I would have basically two um, constants that we're going to define and assign via the initializer. So this will be the value and maybe this will be the title. And via this initializer, we are actually going to just pass both of these in like so. So value, and this one here is title. And we're just going to say self.value is value, self.title is title. Let's continue along. And then here we have a episode. So this one is going to be much trickier because what we actually get for the information of episodes, if we come to the browser here, is we actually get a URL to another API endpoint, which gives us information about a particular episode. So for each of those cells, we're gonna actually need to fetch additional data and we'll have an opportunity to learn about um, some networking and doing a lot of parallel async work. We're gonna send out a bunch of API calls and we're gonna hang on to the responses. So we're gonna go ahead and say um, episode, data URL will basically be this, and this is what we want to hang on to. This is actually the only piece of information that we have. So we're gonna pass that in here and just assign it respectively. Now, if you jump into the character detail view, view model and try to compile command B, we're gonna get a whole lot of errors. And that's okay because we expect them at the moment, but let's take care of this, right? So this photo one is pretty simple. This takes in a image URL, so let's actually fix this here. We're gonna do dot init, image URL, URL, and this will be character dot image, like so. And the next one here will be information, which we're gonna to want to figure out what information do we wanna show. So let's jump into here, and let's see. We can show their status, species, type, gender, origin, maybe their location as well. And maybe we'll also show number of episodes. So let me actually, oh, and created. So let me actually take all of this and I'm just gonna toss it into a comment here just so we can look at it for a quick second while we make our decisions. So do we wanna show their status? Sure, why not? So we're gonna say, we're gonna create a couple of these here. So we're gonna create these by hand. We'll say init and here, let's go ahead and do that again. Let's do dot init. And the value is going to be something. We'll figure that out in a moment. And the title here will be their status. And let's see what else we want. We're going to want their species, type, gender, origin, location, and episode count. That gives us a total of seven. Mm, it might look a little strange with an odd number, so let's actually get rid of one of them. So let's go ahead and do gender, type, and then we also have species. Let me make sure I spelt that correctly, species. Let's get rid of gender. Let's get rid of type, species, and status. We don't want the image. We're not gonna do this or the URL. And we'll have created, I guess as well. Created is when this record was created in the database, but we also do have origin and location. So let's do 
origin, location, and I guess we can do two more and we'll still have an even number. So that's four, six, eight. So I guess we will include uh, episode count. And maybe we'll do total episodes. And the last one we're gonna do up here is, which one did I forget? It is created. So we're gonna to wanna to actually fill in some data for all of these. And we might actually take some time to do that. So we'll see how far we get in this video. Now down here for episodes, this one's a little more interesting. We don't wanna hard code this because this is gonna be dynamic based on every character. So what we're gonna do is say character.episodes, go ahead and map this to the appropriate view model. And specifically, we are going to return a rm character episode collection view cell view model. And we're gonna pass in uh, a URL with a string and this is going to be dollar zero. And let me make sure that this is correct here. So it looks like this is episode, which is a collection of strings. And we are actually not gonna map it. We're going to compact map it so we can get rid of that. And let me make sure that this all looks correct. So it looks like this is returning the appropriate element here, but sometimes it needs a little bit of help since it does indeed struggle. So let's fix this here. So this is going to be a parenthesis and then let's fix this here as well. And I believe that is actually the problem. It actually was fine. I just had some syntax error. So let's go ahead and fill this stuff in. So for the status, we can actually fill in value. I think it also has a text that we added. For gender, we can do value. And let's see what type is. I believe type is already a string. We can do character.species, which is a string. This is going to be character.origin.name. This is going to be character.location.name. Created is actually going to be a formatted date. So we have this date thing here, but we're gonna take a look at making it nicer later on. And here, what we're gonna to wanna to show is essentially character.episodes.count. How many episodes did this character appear in? So go ahead and do Command B and try to run it. We shouldn't have any issues or crashing. Obviously, we won't see anything in here yet, but we will have the appropriate number of cells created at this point because we have actually gone ahead. I actually don't even know how many episodes this is, but we have actually gone ahead and uh, put in the appropriate data to our view models that drive the views. So cool. So that all being said, let's jump into our cells and let's start briefly discussing how we're gonna build these out. So um, let's do the photo cell, perhaps in this video, since it'll be rather simple, but this will just be a single image view. So let's go ahead and create this. I'm also gonna start to get rid of these obnoxious colors that we use to actually model out these cells. So back in our controller, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, if you did want a color, you could actually do it just in the cell. It's not really good to move around all this view logic in weird places. So in our view, we're gonna go ahead and set this up. So I'll close view model and let's set up the image view inside of here. We're gonna have a single image view and let's actually be smart and I can probably just copy and paste it uh, from the prior collection view cell that I created. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it actually directly in here like so. And what we can do here is we're gonna say content view add sub view. We're gonna add this. We're gonna say set up constraints. I realize in the other files I called it add constraints, but you know, name it whatever you want. Consistency generally is better, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a rebel engineer today. So we're gonna say top anchor is constraint equal to content view top anchor. Let's copy and paste this a total of four times. And bottom anchor, and just copy and paste this on the left hand side as well. Essentially, we're, what we're doing again here is we're pinning this to each side of the content view. And I think that really should just be good enough. So uh, we're never going to reuse this cell, but let's go ahead and just reset its image here. And the most important thing is inside of this view model, we want to provide a mechanism to actually fetch the image. So we're going to say public func uh, download image. Or maybe we'll do fetch image. And it's going to have a completion handler. 
And this should look familiar because we have actually already done this elsewhere. This is going to return to us a result with some data, an error. And the beauty of this now is when we actually try to fetch the image, because we already have it loaded here from the thing we clicked on, it's actually never going to fetch. It's going to read it from our cache. So what I want to do in here is say image loader, and we're going to get the shared instance. We'll say download with a given URL, which will simply be our image URL from up above. If we don't have it, we're going to basically just break. So we do want to unwrap it here. We'll say image URL is going to be image URL. And if we don't have an image URL for any unusual case, we're just going to return a failure and this will be URL error, bad request, or maybe we'll do bad URL is what I should do. And if I'm not mistaken, that's all we basically need to do. And actually this we need to create with a code and this will be bad URL. And if I go ahead and compile this, shouldn't have any issues. We just wanna set up this image view to fetch. So we'll say view model, go ahead and fetch the image. We'll have a result here. We're gonna switch on set results. And in this case, we'll have the data back. So we can say self.image view.image is UI image with data, which is our data. In this case, we're just going to ignore the failure. We're gonna introduce nice failure handling much later on in the series. Let's capture self in a weak capacity so we don't leak any memory. And let's go ahead and just bump this up to the main queue, i.e. the main thread where we should do all of our data operations. So cool, let's go ahead and select Morty Smith and just like that, we have Morty's uh, pretty excited looking face popping up directly on our uh, collection view here. And we do actually have all the other cells here as well. You just can't see them because there's no background color. So if I actually go and say content view background color here is uh, maybe we'll go ahead and say tertiary system background. And I can also go ahead and say content view layer corner radius is what I'm looking for. I can make this eight. And then we're gonna need to build out all our other cells in the upcoming videos. So we're looking pretty darn good already. We have our unlimited scrollable character uh, grid here. We can load in more data. It handles it very nicely. We've kept all of our code separate. And actually here's that crash that I saw previously. So let me actually take a look since I've caught it. So. This is actually saying attempt to insert uh, item 40 into section zero, but there are only 40 items. So this is a little strange here. I guess what's going on is the view model is trying to opportunistically add more elements than what actually exist. So we're gonna want to debug this later on. I won't touch it at the moment and go down a rabbit hole, but that is all I've got for this part. We've got our first cell put together. We've got all of our view models hooked up. We'll need to build out the info cell and the episode cell. So drop a like before clicking away, subscribe, say hello in the comments, and I'll see you in the next part.